There are four main mechanisms for creating an abnormal opacity in the lung. And in this talk on isolated ground glass opacities, we're effectively discussing two of them. The difference between consolidation and interstitial opacity on chest CT can be best um, described as the difference between peering through aluminum foil versus peering through a screen door. When consolidation occurs um, on a non-contrast chest CT, uh, whatever underlying anatomy that was there, pulmonary vessels, airways, um, cannot be seen. They're obscured. Um, when there's an interstitial opacity on a CT image, whatever underlying anatomy is partially obscured, but you can kind of still see some of it there. When consolidation is incomplete, uh, meaning the air spaces are not completely filled with fluid, or when the interstitial opacities that you're looking at are so fine, they're finer than the spatial resolution of the pixels on a CT image. What you have is um, not like peering through aluminum foil or a screen door anymore, but peering through, as one of my colleagues likes to describe it, a tinted window. That's what ground glass opacity is. Ground glass opacity is very, is very much like mild consolidation or very, very fine interstitial opacity. So it's probably not surprising then that the technical differential diagnosis for ground glass opacity is the sum of the differential diagnoses for both consolidation and interstitial opacities, which is a very long list. Most of the time um, when we see ground glass opacity on a chest CT, it's usually in the setting of consolidation, interstitial opacity, or nozzle mass um, in that same area. But occasionally we'll encounter ground glass opacity by itself. Um, which we uh, refer to as an isolated ground glass opacity. And in this setting, it's actually possible to create a very short differential diagnosis. And we'll show you how we do that in a few minutes. When we talk about isolated ground glass opacities visible on a chest CT and try to kind of come up with a pie chart of the causes, the pie chart actually is not what you might first expect. Um, I think our instinct would be to imagine that things like pulmonary edema infection, um, acute airspace disease, if you will, uh, would be a large piece of this pie. Um, but that's not quite the case. If we look at, say, a, you know, retrospectively 100 chest CTs with isolated ground glass opacity. Um, why is that? Well, the reason is, is um, Patients who get chest CTs represent a very select population group. Um, if you think about it another way, um, most people with pulmonary edema and lung infection are not managed with CT imaging. Maybe they'll get a chest x-ray. And so the kind of um, person who actually makes it to the point of getting a chest CT is not just a random sampling of um, just patients you know, as a whole. Um, it's a very skewed data set. And so... What turns out is if you look at, um, you know, say 100 cases of isolated ground glass on a chest CT, you'll find out that a third of those cases are due to chronic interstitial lung disease. A third of those cases are due to opportunistic infection. And things like pulmonary edema and lung infection uh, comp compose just under a fifth. Knowledge of this actual breakdown and likelihood of disease is going to be one big part of the um, kind of um, approach we're going to use to come up with a nice, um, succinct, um, short differential diagnosis for isolated ground glass opacities. What else we're we going to use? Well, it turns out it won't be the imaging features themselves. Uh, once you know there's an isolated ground glass passage there, staring at it more is not going to permit you to be that much more specific. What will make you more specific is knowing the clinical presentation, the clinical scenario in which that patient is in.
And there's five clinical scenarios you need to be able to identify to help render a specific or relatively short differential diagnosis for isolated ground glass opacities on a chest CT. Those five clinical settings are the immunocompromised host, the patient with bone marrow suppression, the outpatient pre um, presenting with progressive dyspnea, the patient presenting with acute dyspnea, and the long-term inpatient. Immunocompromised hosts are folks um, who are perhaps HIV positive with low CD4 counts, uh, people with organ transplants or folks on high-dose steroids. In these patients, your differential diagnosis for isolated ground glass pasties based on our knowledge of what's, you know, what we what was come before, is that the differential diagnosis is pretty much just one of opportunistic infections. I'm not going to be guessing pulmonary edema in these cases. I'm just going to be guessing pneumocystis and several viral infections. Pneumocystis, um, most common uh, imaging finding or presentation is isolated ground glass opacity. Um, in severe cases, that can become consolidation, but isolated ground glass um, in a diffuse or sometimes non-diffuse distribution um, is a pretty common um, uh, presentation. And these are just a couple of examples. CMV pneumonia is another um, cause of isolated ground glass opacities we'll need to consider in the immunocompromised host. Um, very difficult to visually distinguish, though, from pneumocystis. HSV pneumonia, another um, cause of isolated ground glass passes in the immunocompromised host. Um, again, these are going to be difficult to distinguish from um, things that are in our differential diagnosis here, like pneumocystis. And finally, RSV pneumonia in the immunocompromised host is the, probably the, the last thing I want to be thinking about. RSV is um, not, quote, unquote, uh, you know, one of the, the typical um, opportunistic infections we kind of think of at first. Um, in most immunocompetent um, individuals, um, there's basically no visual findings or imaging findings in the lung. However, in immunocompromised adults, um, we can see um, significant findings sometimes. That significant finding um, can sometimes be consolidation, sometimes even tree and bud nodules, but a lot of times um, ground glass opacities, like in this patient. So immunocompromised hosts uh, with isolated ground glass opacities, we're going to be thinking about opportunistic infections. And pretty much only that. In patients who are bone marrow suppressed, we're referring to folks on chemotherapy or with lymphoproliferative um, malignancies. Our differential diagnosis is gonna expand a bit. These folks are very likely to have an opportunistic infection like the ones we just discussed as the cause of our isolated ground glass opacities. However, other things become possible because these folks tend to have other issues. Their platelets may not be quite normal. They may be um, seeing chemotherapy. In this case, um, because of this, you know, this kind of um, situation, um, other diagnoses become potentially um, good explanations for an isolated ground glass opacity. Diagnoses like alveolar hemorrhage, volume overload, and drug toxicity. So our differential diagnosis is a little bit broader than in just the um, the um, last group we discussed. Alveolar hemorrhage can present as isolated ground glass opacity. Um, here's an example. Um, obviously, as um, alveolar hemorrhage becomes more severe, um, it can then trend towards a more consolidative appearance. Volume overload, another cause of isolated ground glass opacity on this, we see on this CT. Drug reaction, too. Um, we discussed the 10 lung injury response patterns on our prior talks on 
um, chronic non-diffuse consolidation and uh, interstitial lung disease. It turns out several of these lung injury response patterns can occasionally present as an isolated ground glass opacity. And we know that most of these lung injury response patterns, um, for, for most of these uh, lung injury response patterns, drug reaction or drug toxicity is a potential cause. So in folks who are bone marrow suppressed, our differential diagnosis includes what we would have considered for the immunocompromised host, but we have to think about alveolar hemorrhage, pulmonary edema, and drug toxicity on top of that. The third scenario is the outpatient presenting with progressive dyspnea. These are folks who are otherwise relatively healthy and functional, um, who develop shortness of breath over a period of time, um, maybe a few weeks or even months. Um, they'll be you know, usually presenting in an outpatient kind of environment, perhaps even to a PCP who then refers them to a specialist. In this kind of situation, um, your differential diagnosis is not going to be something like an opportunistic infection. It's unlikely to be something like alveolar hemorrhage or volume overload. Um, but we're going to start thinking primarily about chronic interstitial lung diseases that could sometimes present as an isolated ground glass opacity and two strange rangers. Those chronic interstitial diseases that we want to think of that could present as an isolated ground glass opacity are the ones on the list. And these are probably the six I want you to try to think about um, in this scenario. You think about um, hypersensitivity pneumonitis in its non-fibrotic form, respiratory bronchiolitis and DIP, um, two diseases that are smoking related. On occasion, organizing pneumonia may present not as consolidation, but as just isolated ground glass. The cellular subtype of NSIP can also present as isolated ground glass. And lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia may often present with isolated ground glass as one of its dominant features. The two strange rangers um, we'll touch on are PAP and the lipidic um, type of adenocarcinoma, um, something that we used to refer to as bronchovular carcinoma or BAC. Let's uh, do a deeper dive into each of these diagnoses that we need to be familiar with. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis um, is one uh, uh, can uh, present as isolated ground glass opacities in some folks, as you can see on this image. Respiratory bronchiolitis um, may also uh, present with an isolated ground glass appearance like you see on this image. DIP, which some folks believe is on a continuum with respiratory bronchiolitis, can present as isolated ground glass as well. The distribution can be diffuse in some patients and non-diffuse in other folks. Organizing pneumonia, uh, one of the, um, the lung injury response patterns we discussed during the chronic non-diffuse consolidation talk, um, usually presents as consolidation or consolidation that's heterogeneous with a little bit of admixed um, ground glass, but on occasion can present as isolated ground glass. Uh, we discussed the cellular subtype of NSIP. Um, that can present as isolated ground glass in some folks. And then there's LIP. Um, LIP is known uh, to present with two dominant imaging features. Uh, isolated ground glass is one. Thin-walled cysts is the other. And here's two examples. Our two strange rangers. Uh, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis um, usually are present as a combination of isolated ground glass and septal thickening. But in some cases where the septal thickening is less pronounced, um, you're going to visually kind of just register more the ground glass, um, isolated ground glass um, appearance of these opacities.
as opposed to this more class appearance on this, this patient. Finally, the lipidic um, form of adenocarcinoma um, may in some patients um, present as a mostly isolated ground glass appearance. So in patients with, um, who present with isolated ground glass passages in the scenario of just kind of um, outpatient uh, with progressive dyspnea, um, you're going to be thinking of chronic interstitial diseases most of the time. But be aware of the rare case of uh, one of these strange rangers, uh, PAP or a lipidic adenocarcinoma. For patients who present with isolated ground glass um, on their chest CT um, in the setting of acute dyspnea, um, usually uh, someone who's presenting acutely in the ED or urgent care clinic, uh, we can pretty much almost tell you when the shortness of breath began. Uh, this is when we start thinking of more typical airspace diseases like cardiogenic pulmonary edema, other types of pulmonary edema, and the occasional case of alveolar hemorrhage. Um, we're pretty familiar with the imaging findings um, for CHF or cardiogenic edema. Um, just be aware of this isolated ground glass that can occur in folks with uh, CHF, can be diffuse in pa some patients and non-diffuse in others. And as we've seen in past slides, um, alveolar hemorrhage can certainly present as ground glass too. Final um, type of scenario um, we want to be prepared to handle are the folks who are um, uh, long-term inpatients. Um, if we see isolated ground glass pasty in a long-term inpatient, it's often on a CT that's being done for some other reason that's not necessarily um, dyspnea or hypoxia sometimes. In any event, uh, when we encounter isolated ground glass pasties in the long-term inpatient, the differential diagnosis is almost always just a case of cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So there you have it. Um, when we see isolated ground glass passages, our differential diagnosis is going to be primarily dictated by which one of these five clinical settings your patient is in. Knowing that permits us to shortcut ourselves to creating a very focused differential diagnosis. And the last slide is just to remind us, um, it's common to find ground glass passages in the setting of a nodule or consolidation or interstitial opacity. If that's what you see, use the nodule, the consolidation or the interstitial opacity as the pathway to interpretation and diagnosis. Only if the ground glass opacity is, is existing by itself um, will we use the pathway we've discussed in this talk.